New Landings Job Chat is brought to you in part by the Prosperity Advisory Group, the next step in your financial future. And by the EBS Group, with an unparalleled background in Oracle Solutions and Services. How do you become successful as a freelancer? What kind of skills do you need? What kind of mindset do you need? You'll find out on today's Job Chat. I'm your host, Hector Silva. Our guest is Julia Cortez. Hello. Julie, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, Julie is a 15-year veteran of the advertising and marketing industry, a successful, award-winning freelance copywriter and proofreader. Uh, she graduated from the University of Kansas, and uh, she's a self-proclaimed diva. Copy diva. <laughs> Copy diva. Yes. Okay. Uh, in 2003, she founded the Freelance Exchange of Kansas City, uh, a non-profit professional trade organization specifically for those who are self-employed in the advertising marketing industry. Cortez, along with her partner, started Freelancer University, providing savvy advice, best practices, and industry standards to the creative self-employed professional. She is an active member, volunteer, and leader in the ad community, including three years as Ad2 Communications Director, President, and Immediate Past President for American Advertising Federation. Uh, Julie Cortez is often sought for speaking engagements and media interviews, such as this one. <laughs> Good segue. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Julie. Thanks. Julie, success and freelancing. What do you need to be successful? Where do you start? Where do you start? A lot of it comes with training yourself. There's a lot to be known. People think that they can just quit their jobs or if they lose their job, they can just go out and start freelancing. But you really need to know more than just your own craft, such as copywriting or design. You need to know how to run a business. So that's number one on how to be successful. Um, and then number two is to treat it like a job. Absolutely. You know, again, you're not just... Just because you don't work in an office doesn't mean that you don't have a job. You have a job, so train yourself, set office hours, whether it's 8 to 5, noon to 5, you know, maybe while your kids are in school. Make sure you've got office hours. You're in your office during that time working on your business or meeting with clients. Um, and even if you don't have any paid work coming in the door, you know, there's always stuff to be done, whether it's self-promotion or organizing or planning. There's always stuff to be working on your business. You, you, you mentioned kids. I did. So uh, you, I imagine you need an environment where it's a professional environment. Ideally, yes. <laughs> so do you set a part of your living quarters aside just for this? Yes, you can. I mean, there are many people who have kids who have their own home offices, such as myself. And, uh, you know, you can shut your door. You can bring in a nanny, you know, to watch your kids or a babysitter um, or send them to daycare. Dedicated office space is super important. If you set up shop on your couch, on your kitchen table, you're probably not going to be as focused as you would as if you had your own office space, dedicated office space. And you don't have to work from home. You can go out and rent office space somewhere else or a studio. So there's plenty of options. From what you were saying, it seems like you have to wear many hats. You do. Okay. So how do you get those skills? Uh, is this something that's inbred or you just have to learn them? It's definitely not inbred. Uh, again, most of us on the freelancing advertising marketing side, you know, went to school for design, writing, photography, didn't have to take business classes, didn't really want to take business classes because at the time we didn't see the need. So now we're out on our own, not really knowing what we're doing and we have to figure them out. So it's a matter of, again, here's your self-discipline and going out and finding the answers, whether you find uh, a mentor, somebody who's been doing it themselves 15, 20 years to kind of guide you along the way. If you find some small business resources in your own town, that can help you. There's plenty of opportunities. And then there's also uh, advertising marketing specific resources. And then there's freelancing specific resources too that can help you along the way. You're going to have one area where you're strong. In your case, advertising and uh, marketing. And it, copywriting. And copywriting. Mm -hmm. For someone else, it might be finances. Mm -hmm. So 
is it is it something that you want to be able to partner with somebody or find other people that can fill in those gaps for you? Yes, absolutely. What we call that in the advertising marketing community is forming a virtual agency. So oh. you might not be able to ha to help your client 100% with all of their needs. For example, you know, if you're going to be doing an advertisement, you're going to need the help of a copywriter, a designer, a photographer, etc. You know, maybe even a media buyer. But you know, as a freelancer, you specialize in one niche, most likely, and you can't really do that. So it's very important to surround yourself with those other people and know who you like to partner with so you can fulfill those needs for your clients. So success means a team, not just yourself. Right. Well, okay. that's the smart way of doing it anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, I know that uh, in talking before, you said that cost is very important. So you have to be kind of your own accountant, do you not? Yes, a little bit of everything. You know, you wear many hats. Uh, you're your own salesperson, your own accountant, your own research person. Uh, absolutely. And there are many software programs out there that can help you. Um, but I would also encourage you to use an accountant as well. And I will tell you, if you're self-employed, um, that oftentimes the IRS sees that as a red flag if you're working from home. So make sure you've got your documents in order, you're very well organized, you've got your records kept. And uh, from what I understand, rumor has it that if you actually get your taxes prepared by an official accountant and they put that stamp of approval on it, you're less likely to, to raise the red flags of the IRS. Mm -hmm. Business plan. Mm -hmm. I would imagine to be successful, you have to start with a business plan, do you not? Yes, you do. Do you write that yourself? You can, or you can go somewhere else. Um, I personally wrote mine myself. Uh, it's not that hard. There are many templates online that you can find. Just Google business plans, you know, find one that works for you. I think what's most important about a business plan or any goals that you set for yourself is to go back over them constantly. You know, reassess where you are and then figure out ways that you're going to achieve those goals and make sure that you meet that plan. And have goals. Yes. Oh, absolutely. You know, and, and one of the tricks that I have found, and again, this goes back to the whole psychology behind it, is that you set those goals perhaps at the beginning of the month for that month. You know, you could do it yearly, weekly, whatever works for you or all of the above. Um, but create those goals, print them out. You know, maybe you pick your, your top three goals for the month and you know, and in your sketchbook or whatever, you figure out exactly what it's going to take to achieve those, but print those out, put them in front of you, like on a bulletin board in front of your desk. So you see them every single day, every day. So if your goal is to make X amount of money this month, okay, what are you going to do to make sure that you hit that? And when it's constantly on your mind, it's really going to help you focus on your business and not be tempted to go and, you know, do the laundry or run errands or whatever distractions that you have, because there are plenty when you work from home. When you're working alone, mm -hmm. there's nobody else to blame. This is true. <laughs> it's all on you. That's right. But then again, conversely, you also get all the credit too when things go right. right. So. But you have to be accountable for everything you do uh, mm -hmm. to your client. Yes, you do. Right. So is that a different mindset than when you're working nine to five? Well, you know, you've got to be confident and you've got to believe in yourself and what you do. Um, you know, at the same point in time, I would still encourage freelancers to be open minded because you're not always going to be right, you know, and maybe it's just even a matter of agreeing to disagree. Uh, when you work in a nine to five corporate environment, it, it is going to be a little bit different because there's that hierarchy structure, right? So you've got a manager, a boss, the owner, whatever. And when you're a freelancer, you're all of that. So yeah, the accountability is all on you. Are there volunteer positions or areas where it would be helpful to your job if you were part of that? I would say in any position that, um, you know, even if you work full time, that volunteering is essential. Um, it's important to grow your network. And, um, and even if you're not looking for a full-time job right now, you never know, you could lose your job tomorrow. And they say it takes six months to, to build a strong network, so why not already have that network built? So if you're looking for a job, if you're looking for freelance work, it's essential to get your name out there and be well known in your community um, and in, in your industry. So yeah, you can volunteer on so many different boards. You know, you can get involved with industry clubs, professional trade organizations, but you could even get involved with, you know, some of the charity boards that are 
are close to your heart, whether it's animal related or health related. There's so many different opportunities where you can utilize your skills, meet different people, and then get different opportunities for referrals and for work. To come so in you door. get to demonstrate what you can do to people that might not know you. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It, it's been so beneficial for me that, you know, I get referrals all the time just because of my, free, my volunteer work that I do. Networking, as you said, is super important. Mm -hmm. Are there any other areas that you can see where it's important to be successful that you need to be involved in? You need to have a presence online for sure. Um, and that doesn't just mean a website, but in today's social media age, you've got to have a Facebook fan page. You've got to be on LinkedIn and connected with people. Um, I would even have a Twitter handle and utilize those. Don't just have them, but use them for sure. Build your brand, build a reputation. And again, there's so many different opportunities right now. Google Plus. I could go on and on, you know, but hone in on the ones that you find that are really going to work for you. Make sure you have a presence. That's free PR. You might as well take advantage of it and use it. And when you're doing that, make sure that you can show what you can do even through the media that you're using at that point. Sure. You know, if you just finished up a project, post it. Hey, guys, just wanted to share with you what I just recently accomplished. You know, I'm super excited. Go team, you know, and, and please, you know, like my client's page too. Your clients will love you for that, right? You know, but yeah, I just finished up this ad, you know, and then you'll get a lot of likes and people sharing and, you know, it's, it's viral. It's, it's amazing that what social media can do for a freelancer these days. Are there times when freelancers will work together, uh, even though they're in the same discipline, help each other? Yes. To be, so that they can both be successful? Absolutely. You know, um, as we've talked about before, you know, you can form a virtual agency. So you can, you can fill in the gaps that you don't necessarily cover. But even working, I work with fellow copywriters all the time. I don't really even see them as competition. I see it, we're helping out each other. I think right. there's enough work to go around that there really isn't any competition. Sometimes I'll bring them in on a project. If I'm slammed, I might bring them in to help, right? Um, and they do the same for me. It also helps for mentoring, right? Hey, you know, Steve, have you ever worked with this client before? Have you ever had trouble getting paid, you know, or what was your experience? Or, hey, can you help me come up with a with a headline? I'm really struggling, you know, to concept this particular project kind of thing. So, I mean, I would definitely say have friends in the business. Don't consider them your competition, even though they are. I mean, keep that in mind for sure. But um, don't let that hinder you from becoming friends with them because you're going to just gain so much more and benefit from having that relationship. And as someone dealing with marketing, marketing oneself is important. Mm -hmm. I know you talked about social media. Are there other marketing areas that people can market their selves to be successful in? Of course. Um, I'm big on personal relationships. So for me, we talked about networking, getting out and shaking hands, yeah. um, you know, inviting somebody to lunch or out for drinks, you know, or out for coffee, you know, and just making sure you're top of mind. Um, but you might also want to consider email marketing, you know, uh, sending direct mail pieces to them. Uh, there's so many different avenues that you can take and there's different websites that you can get on as well that will help promote you too. Would you suggest that a freelancer become part of a chamber of commerce or some such organization? Some kind of organization, absolutely. It doesn't necessarily have to be the chamber, but uh, any business-related um, or industry-related organization, absolutely. I think that's really going to be beneficial. What's the best way to find clients? Again, an excellent question, and it's different for everybody. You know, you might find that networking works for you, and, and Sally over here, you know, might find that, you know, she prefers to stay behind her keyboard because she's a little bit more introverted and stay at home. So she might go online and get into some, um, you know, job chats or, or, you know, project boards kind of thing. There's so many different avenues um, that you can explore to find these clients, and it just kind of depends on your personality and what's going to work best for you. What are some must-knows for freelancers in relation to their clients? You know, that that's a great question as well. So many great questions today, Hector. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the must-knows, I think, would be knowing the industry standards, you know, knowing what it takes to run a business, know what your legal rights are. Uh, for example, you know, if a client doesn't pay within 30 days, what can you do to get your payment, know that you can charge a late fee, how much is that late fee, and then, you know, what 
um, what can you do to follow up to make sure that you're following industry standards as well? Um, you need to know what to do about taxes and what you can write off and what you can't write off. You need to know about health insurance, uh, just so many different areas. And there's some great books out there as well um, that I would recommend. Um, and we can put those on your website, I assume, later, you know, sure. for, for resources. Um, but again, the Internet is just a wealth of information. But get out there and make sure that you not only know your craft, but you know how to run a business. And don't let, let your clients take advantage of you because they will try, unfortunately. When you're self-employed, they think, oh, one man shop, you don't know what you're doing. No, that's not true. Make sure you know what you're doing, right? Make sure you know how to put together an estimate and an invoice and a contract and make sure you've got everything very buttoned up so you appear very professional and you keep up with the industry standards of what's going on. It's said that success breeds success. Mm -hmm. But we tend not to want to boast about ourselves. Wouldn't you say that blowing your own horn becomes important when you're a freelancer? You absolutely have to. You know, yeah, I find those people who don't pr promote themselves, and I'm like, well, wait a, spe wait a second, especially for us, we are in the advertising, marketing, PR industry. We need to be marketing ourselves. Yeah, so as difficult as it is, you've got to do it. And, you know, your friends might look at you on Facebook and say, oh, you're always promoting yourself. But there's a fine line, you know, of doing it all the time or just a little bit or hitting your target audience every so often, right? And just don't inundate them with, with the messages and, and vary your messages depending on your audience, too. And uh, especially with any potential new clients. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't show them what your success has been in the past, how are they going to have any confidence in what your success is going to be with them? Right. You know, maybe you've won an award recently for your work. What a great opportunity to get your name out there. And again, not just through social media, but write up a press release. Or if you have a friend who's in PR, have them write up a press release and send it to the media outlets. You never know what newspaper or magazine or, or website is going to pick that up for free, right, and, and put it out there. And then, great. So not only... Is it going to be showing up, you know, in the business journal or your local newspaper or what have you? But you can also take the link because I'm sure it's going to be online, too. You mm -hmm. can take the link and promote it out again. So you're going to get that double exposure. Are there a lot of freelancers out there today that are successful? Yes, absolutely. But there's a lot that aren't as well. Mm -hmm. And what would you say is the single thing that makes the difference between that successful one and the non-successful one. It's uh, all about motivation. It, it's, it's about, you know, setting those goals, achieving those goals, figuring out what you have to do, and then doing them. You know, it's not sitting at home expecting the work to come to you because it's all about karma, right? Whatever energy you put out into the, into the universe, that's what you're going to get back in return. So it, it's, it's not just knowing what you do as far as, let's say, advertising and marketing. Mm -hmm. But there has to be something that drives you. Right. And that could be anything. Right. It could be you need to make a certain amount of money a month, per month. You need to purchase a new car. You know, it could be you want to win, you know, the next big award show kind of thing. You want to win top honors. Whatever it is that drives you. Take that, use that as your motivation. Again, set those goals, print them out, put them up in front of you on your desk, and then, you know, just hit the pavement running. And when we're saying drive, there's also the, uh, the satisfaction in being able to do something new, something different. Mm -hmm. I imagine a freelancer has to live on the edge work the is something that is going to be different than they're going to be able to get from the in-house people. Right. It, it's going to be different, you know, and quite honestly, even if you're super busy right now, I would still suggest that you're constantly looking for new business because, again, you don't know what's going to happen to you next week or down the road. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about multiple streams of income and freelancing, right? And that's one of the bonuses, which is great because – you would never want to just solely do work for one particular client, even if it's the biggest client, you know, they're the biggest corporation in your town. You know, that's great that you've got them as your client and they're giving you a bunch of work. But I can't tell you how many times I've known people who have done that and then that client goes under, you know, or something happens and they have to cut that freelancer. And guess what? Your single stream of income just went away. So... 
you need to have multiple streams of income coming in and you always have to be looking at the future as well. And even if you're so busy right now, you still have to be promoting yourself somehow, some way, getting yourself out there, shaking hands, putting your name out there and making sure that you've got those leads for down the road, even if it's six months down the road. Well, uh, we want to thank you for spending your time with us today. Thanks for having me. And uh, if somebody wanted to reach you for more advice, more information, where could they get a hold of you? They can reach me by email through Freelancers University at julie at freelancersu.com. Great. Well, you can hear more advice, more information from Julie on other podcasts, uh, and you can also hear from some of our other experts on podcasts if you go to www.newlandingsjobchat.org or just go to YouTube and search for Job Chat. Uh, until next time, may your days be full of health, happiness, and success. Bye.